afternoon. It reminded me of that Friday song. Do you ever? <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Gavin Gush Farmhouse Fabrics. Uh, Kristen and Sally, Emma and Michelle, and you'll hear them in the background when you send us some comments that we can reply to. And uh, we've got a lot going on, Kristen. We have smocked. We have uh, Laura. Lauren has sent us her beautiful hyacinth dress from, yeah. from Penny Patterns made out of purple seersucker. Ann Parker with her spring haul. We're going to show you all the details of her gorgeous dresses today. We have some kits. Uh, highlighting a kit markdown that we did a few months back. Um, a fabric bundle. Tons of stuff to show you all here. We do. We're going to talk a little bit about zippers and your best resource for trying to put in a zipper is threads magazine and um, I mean they have amazing help online and then we we're gonna show how we let's start with that should we start with yeah that? definitely okay we have the sweetest customer and her name is Susan and she called one and I haven't answered the phone I hardly ever answer the phone and she's like I, I can't remember she's like I have a problem I'm like oh no let's see if I can answer but her problem was so interesting to me because she was, Susan has a 60 year old first communion dress and she wanted to remake it for her granddaughter who is living in Italy. And, and I guess they're a little bit older in Italy when they take their first communion. And so um, she was trying to match the white and we all know over the years, white cotton takes on a, a little bit of a softer white or I mean you hate to say dirty white but sometimes dingy, dingy I sometimes. mean it really but she went to Sandy Hunter who is in North Carolina and Sandy has been an expert on cleaning um, heirloom garments and she she bought some uh, product from Sandy and then she washed the dress this is the bodice y'all we understand how important heirlooms are I mean that really is our world That's um, right. and then the care that I mean this means a whole, really in reality this means a whole lot more to this lady than it does to us as far as it having that significant emotional attachment but y'all we we fretted this package arriving wow. we we have yes. been taking special care to match up the fabrics i mean there's so much love in this garment and we really appreciate y'all entrusting us with this kind of I stuff i know when she said she was going to send me a little piece of the of the sash and i thought okay like even that's then that scary. Was, it was a little yeah. scary but then when it didn't come she shipped this on and she's in north carolina only we're south carolina she she sent it on march the 2nd and then she told me she was sending the bodice of the dress. And I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> man. And so she has wonderful people in her in her um, post office in her town. And they've been tracking it. She had tracking on, on her package. They've been wonderful. And finally it arrived day before yesterday. Something we always do is like you always make sure that your pen is not clicked oh. out. Because I'm sitting here <laughs> holding this and I'm like, oh, my goodness. I know. I walk around the shop and I unclick, unclick them. Yeah. yeah. But this is so pretty. So the inset piece had um, embroidery on it. And then on the cuffs, this had embroidery and that has some French lace on the cuffs. And so what, what Susan has done, she actually has taken the skirt of this dress and it was enough to create the bodice this, of this simplicity pattern number S9246. So she was able to make the bodice out of the skirt fabric. How do we fall in here? Our challenge was to match fabric yeah. to this 60 year old fabric that they had as a family heirloom. I mean, how special to be able to wear something that's made from from your family. family. I and love it. She's gonna put this in the shadow box, the bodice. So that's gonna be pretty special. But we looked at all of our organdy and it was either too dark of an ecru or too white. And so then, as I was so then we get into well, would you line it with a different color to yeah, make it look a little darker? Yeah. Well, whenever it stands up off that lining fabric, it's still going to look white. So, so look at this. This is old English ivory Swiss voile, and I'm like, hey, we're in the right family. This looks good. Mm -hmm. And so then, but then we have a lining. Well, we do have old English ivory like a, a Swiss Nalona, and so when you put that together. 
then guess what? It's it's way too beige because this is First Communion. We understand that you are sweating the details, <laughs> and and we really do. I mean, it's a challenge and it's fun to us, and and we like this kind of work. How many different ways are we gonna have to pair this to get it the right shade? So look, this can they can they see? You think they can see the difference in color? So I tried it with a white Pima Cotton Batiste, and and so this is white. This is kind of a soft white, and you Ooh, wouldn't, you on wouldn't, video, it's oh, even, it shows, it's it perfect, show. no, I love oh, it, oh, it looks perfect, uh-huh, but if we put, we, we have, we're having her put the white Pima Cotton Batiste as a lining, and then this is the overlay, the voil, and then she can line the bodice also with the white Pima Cotton Batiste, and she can have a perfect match. I think it's beautiful. We understand that you don't want to walk out the door and, and see in the sunlight how different these yeah, colors are. I true. mean, we will take stuff outside to yeah. make sure that it matches appropriately. We sweat your details as well. Right. So, so thank you for sending this yes, to us. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Susan, for letting us um, share this because I think a lot of people struggle with it. And I know over, over years and generations, whites become more of a soft white mm -hmm. or... You know, you can wash them, but they, even. yeah, it gets into that white, silk white world, which made me think about Malene lace because here we have white Malene lace, and it looks great with the um, with the old English ivory Swiss voil over white lining, and the ecru really does show up ecru, but if you put layers of the old English together and lined it with the same color then that almost blends and that in, looks doesn't perfect it? Yeah. yeah yeah so it's a matter of just playing with it and playing with look it look at until... our yellow buttons i yep. wonder if they had a oh I I there's probably they, they were white weren't they yeah they were probably wow. white so we're going to carefully wrap this and get this back on the way thank you for my... letting us show this yeah. susan we appreciate it don't be afraid to try and put an unusual type color lining or underlining with something. Don't look at your stash and think, I don't have anything that matches this. I mean, start pulling stuff out and layering it. And yeah. it really gets interesting. The way colors right. can change they and have can. a subtle hue difference just by aligning a lighter with a darker, or vice versa. Now, I'm going to mention Gail Doan because GailDone.com. Gail Doan is the queen of heirloom sewing and she really knows her fabric. She loves to use Swiss voil. For one thing... You can do all your heirloom stitches on it and it's beautiful, but also there's very little wrinkling factor in this. For, and an, for an all cotton lightweight. Yeah, for an all nothing. cotton. It's yeah. really, really nice. So Swiss Did oil. you hear Gail Doan is going to have a one hour, um, I'm not exactly sure how she's saying it. It's going to be Saturday from 9 to 10 and she is going to be showing garments that she's created in the past. Um, I believe it's called uh, an heirloom universe or it's something in that world. Y'all, if you are listening to Gail Doan talking about sewing, you are learning about yeah, sewing. That's right. That's um, right. And I don't care your level. She's, I she's, think you have to sign up for you it. Do you do have to have sign up. You have to sign up for it. An overview of the heirloom sewing universe. It is Saturday, April 15th. Saturday, right. April, so Saturday, April 15th. And y'all, I'm going to tune in because I'm going to learn from Gail. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. So something else that we had fun that came in. Um, this is from Lauren. I am so sorry. I keep stumbling over your name because I'm really not sure how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> Lassinge, maybe. It's probably easier than I'm making it. But um, this is a hyacinth from Peony Patterns. And I have, the, maybe the two years ago, I couldn't stop dreaming about um, sailor collars. And this fulfills all of those requirements mm -hmm. that I have. Um, it's such a cute, it has this little tiered skirt, um, a puff sleeve. There's a sleeveless version to the hyacinth. Um, I really, really love. Oh, un untie it and show them how. So it's not a separate, it, the tie is part of the collar. Isn't that cute? It is so cute. Yeah. I just love it. I thought she was going to ask me to tie it. I was like, oh. <laughs> no. But the tie is just an extension of the collar, so it's so adorable. It is. So this is made with purple seersucker. Lauren sent a very much cuter bow. What kind of bow is that? <laughs> That's your kid's wiggling kind of bow. Um, she paired one of our vintage ribbons, yeah. a star ribbon, That's to the cute. sleeve. It's so cute. I mean, everything about this, except for this hideous bow that I've just tied, is just all the right details so look how cute that is 
So peonypatterns.com, they're a PDF sewing pattern company. Um, they have a lot of really cute hand embroidery designs oh, right now. And new ones. New, new ones, ones coming out. Y'all, yeah. it's super cute. They're really pretty. Watch and see if they have a bow tutorial on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not able to complete it right now. Um, all right, what else? This is one we had from Chloe Lamb. We showed y'all this a few months ago, but still, it's super cute. Isn't that darling? Yes. That's just the same pattern, isn't it? It yeah. is, yep. So oh. this is a, a Fabric Finders cotton print and um, with a linen collar hyacinth. It's I love the sleeveless, sleeveless version as well. It's super cute. I could see your little girls in that would be Wouldn't that be adorable. fun? I love the yeah. fullness of the yeah, skirt. I, too. I mean, it's just cute. They'd be twirling for sure. Right. Yeah, that's a really darling. So we came out with this last year. I'll let you hold it. All right. This is this super cute, we're calling it the tulip dress. Um, this is a, pe not peony patterns, um, Primrose Lane is the name of this pattern company. This is the Wendy by Primrose Lane, and it really is one of my favorite little patterns. Um, it's got this little placket opening on the front. And um, or just front opening. Well, that's a little sweetheart neckline. You know, that's cute. We've done it many times, uh -huh. haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, it's hey, it reminds me of your flat zipper. It's actually kind of oh, that look right, where it's a little right. offset. Well, it has this beautiful. Um, this is one of Kristen's favorites. This a little eyelet edging. I'm gonna put that. Then yeah. you can bring it on down. It's so so pretty with with the eyelet holes, so clean and gorgeous. So that's a that would be for the. Um, for the little flutter sleeve. Man, that's cute. And then all the the designs for the appliques are in there. The that's fabrics so sweet. for the applique. The applique also comes with the pattern. So that's mm -hmm. something that's included with um, the Primrose Lane Wendy. It's very cute. Our flowers are blooming like crazy around our area. So the pollen is in right. full swing yeah, over pollen. there. Everybody's getting sick with their sinuses and the pollen is just getting to everybody. Yeah. So Let's talk about your zipper. I mean, okay. you had a question right. about your zipper um, for the giveaway yesterday. Yeah, um, we, uh, we're we kind of reorganizing some things around here, and we have a lot of uh, beautiful zippers that it takes a long time to put these on because when I buy a truckload of them at one time, then we get kind of tired of putting them on and like, okay, we have 500 more styles to go. And so Kristen's been getting that in some kind of a, an order, and I thought, well, what we ought to do is give a um, give a zipper assortment as one of our gifts because zippers are really awesome. And I know that the PDF pattern companies are using a lot of zippers in their garments. And I really love to see that the fabrics that Sally pairs zippers with. Um, and I feel like you've done it with your sheer overlay. You have a slip, like it's an A-line mm -hmm. with a, a lace fabric mm -hmm. and a slip. I feel like you've gone with a zipper on every single one of those. And that's interesting to me. Well, sometimes an invisible zipper, it, it works really great on things like the lace because <laughs> you don't even see your seam because mm -hmm. the lace is kind of hard to sew. sew a, a, a top stitch a seam on it but if you do an invisible zipper then all that's on the inside and then the same with velveteens and corduroys because when you sew your I mean I never used an invisible zipper growing up but I I use a different kind but I do like the way it looks where it just looks like a seam all the way up and then I pulled an invisible zipper all you see all you see is this little tab sticking out the top yeah, yeah. that's uh -huh. a little tab at the neckline and so that is nice and there there are invisible zipper feet feet for that you can buy at your sewing machine dealer for your specific sewing machine you can also buy a generic one and um i mean i bought i bought one for my bernina and i also have a generic one we, and we sell the generic ones here at first uh First Presbyterian, first Presbyterian Church. First historic First Baptist Church in Beach Island. <laughs> I'm like, I'm I definitely heard say. First Presbyterian. Yeah. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> Here's First that? Presbyterian. <laughs> we also like um, separating zippers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. I dreamed about an old pastor. I mean, not old. A retired pastor and his wife last night. Frank and Janice Hyder. I dreamed about them. I dreamed. I They're part that, of the historic First yeah, Baptist. <laughs> that must be on my mind. <laughs> anyway, um, Threads Magazine 
Threads has a tutorial on YouTube. <laughs> what? That is funny. <laughs> I dreamed he was putting eyebrow pencil on. <laughs> oh, my. I'm sorry, Frank. <laughs> and maybe that's why I didn't wake up. I wanted to see what happened. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I'm sticking in this one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, when I pulled up um, information about zippers today, what was the first thing that came up? Um, Threads Magazine. Nine zipper installation techniques. And anytime we talk about putting in zippers and wanting to refer people to a video for putting in zippers, it's always Threads Magazine. That's right. They That's have right. a fabulous instructor. Um, it's a man who mm -hmm. walks you through putting in zippers. And I it's, know. He makes it so easy. Right. And because sometimes it's scary, it would scared me, the, the um, invisible zipper. And I think he tells you to unzip it. You can roll that little coil out and press it down. Just don't melt your zipper. I did that once. <laughs> Don't make it too hot or use a pressing cloth. And um, then you can sew it without a, a invisible zipper foot. Cool. But So there is something called a lapped zipper it, because it laps over. And this is the zipper I grew up using. And so you, you would need at least a 5 8 inch. You would need a 5 8 inch seam to do this in order to have enough room because you, you, you create a... I sewed the seam up to about here, and then on the one side, I, I pressed under maybe three-eighths of an inch, and so that's that's the side that kind of hides your zipper, and then... So she has two pieces of fabric that she's joined here. Yeah, you can't right. tell that she's not just cut down into yeah. this thing because the, the you did an awesome job lining up your plaid, but... Um, so I don't understand the importance of the five eight inch seam. What are you, what are well, you saying there? Because you shoved your this zipper over a little bit in this direction to hide it, mm -hmm. and so you have to have enough room on this lapped part so that it catches the the it catches. See how it almost doesn't catch that? Yeah, let's show them. Okay. So on the the side that shows, you have to have enough room so that you can actually sew through the seam allowance. But first of all, and I do this almost all the time, I stabilize both sides of my seam. Can you um, see that there? Yeah. There's. I stabilize there. it with an iron-on interfacing. And this is our new Legacy Dream, and I thought, I'm going to try that because it's so sheer and nice, but it stabilizes the fabric so that it doesn't stretch. When, because when you sew on this, it does want to kind of push the fabric. I mean, and, you're really keeping it yeah, where and you stretch want it. it out. Uh -huh. But also, like, in using something that's like a slinky or shifty mm -hmm. fabric, like mm -hmm. a silk, silk well, that will hold or, it. That yeah. will hold it better, too. And so then um, I was going to show this little piece of thread down here because a lot of times I'll just backstitch when I start a new seam. But then you end up with a little thread tail, and it's not very pretty. Show them this. This is so cool. So yeah, look at this technique. This is so fun. So here's, uh, this is where I started my, I started here, went across the zipper, and then up. And so here's my, here's my little thread tail. So I turn it over, I take the bobbin thread, and give it a pull. And, um, okay. And so you can pull the top thread through because it loops. With the bobbin. Uh, yeah. So here's the here's the top thread. I pulled it I pulled it through. Let's make sure there it is. It disappeared. And so then what you do is you just tie this in a knot. You tie it in a square knot. So that's your back stitch that's, right there. Yeah, that's your back <laughs> stitch. And then this is real pretty and clean yes. on this side. So so you know, tug on your your uh, yeah. bobbin thread and it'll it won't work if you back stitch. So don't back stitch first. But but you can leave a tail and then tug on it and it'll pull that loop up. That's and, so cool. I mean I do it sometimes when I'm like sewing the bias down on uh, around the neckline because it wants to, it's hard to clip it close enough that right back here at the back um, where you top stitch sometimes. But if you if you leave that tail and pull it to the back and then it hides that and it's pretty. Just don't back stitch. Yeah, don't back stitch because yeah. then you can't pull it through. That's really neat. Yeah. Well, maybe you help Milani out. She says, I hate putting in a lap zipper. Oh, this is the kind we always made. I'm when I was in high school, um, A-line skirts were in style, and um, I was in Michigan, and we had lots of wool. And so I made a like every night I'd go home. It took me an hour 
to make an A-line skirt with a lap oh zipper. Goodness. And I have a sweater to match, and then I had a new outfit the next day. That's cool. Yeah, and so I made, I put millions of these in. Well, hey, that's from your dad's sheet? No, not, not just that. <laughs> she, but, she first made fabric with the wool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we spinning and weaving. Yeah. But who, who just put the side zipper in? Was it, um, was it Abby or was it um, bringing back sewing? Uh, bringing back sewing. Bringing back yeah, sewing. Bringing sewing back. Bringing sewing back. Well, she, it was interesting because didn't she get a, she bought a dress or something and then she altered it to make it fit better. And so, and she's so slender and pretty. And so she. That helps with finishing um, flap zippers. <laughs> it helps with anything. <laughs> and it helps with making you feel good when you're done. Because yeah. <laughs> she makes some cute clothes. Anyway. They, they did this a lot back in the 40s and 50s because they had a lot of fitted dresses like shirtwaist dresses. They actually opened up the seam oh, yeah. between under the arm and then past the waist and down to the hip. So Maybe. you don't get in there. It's just to help you get in. Yeah, it's it to help you up. get in. And uh -huh. so then they put a zipper and and so then you unzip that and then it opens up so that you can Would get it over your head. Would that be a lap zipper? Because I've only seen them as invisibles, I think. You can do it either way. You can yeah. do a lap zipper, and the one I didn't, I ended up not, because I only did this like five minutes uh -huh. ago. So there's another one where it actually meets in the center. You can do that, and when you when you do that zipper, then um, you sew up to where the bottom of your zipper is, and then you you can back stitch back there, and then you use your basting stitch and sew the rest of the way up, and um, press that seam open, and then you use um the double-sided sticky tape mm -hmm. like wonder what's it called wonder under it's not wonder under <laughs> but it's something wonder tape i think yeah, it's wonder what it's tape. called <laughs> yeah wonder tape and i meant to bring some out and you can tape your tape your zipper in place and then all you have to do is go to the outside connie i mean cookie bar does that does she do that yes yeah and so then the, the seam the seam is all sewn mm -hmm. your zipper is taped in place in the back and then you just Really, it looks better if you start at the bottom and go up and start at the bottom and go up. But probably I'm kind of lazy and I might start at one <laughs> side and mm -hmm. come up. But it's prettier because it doesn't like push your fabric in mm -hmm. two directions. Mm -hmm. But that, and then you pull out your basting thread and then it's like, in place. it's in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a, um, that's an easy We definitely one. will refer y'all to the threads video yeah. though. Yeah. It, it really is so easy to walk through the steps with yeah. him. Um, so yeah. something that we have been um, so excited about here, we are sending these dresses back uh, to Anne. Anne oh, is man. the owner of Cross-Eyed Cricket, and she has um, shared her spring, her spring plates with us. And every single plate that Anne makes, she actually smocks and makes into a garment. Oh, so cute. And um, man, to see these things in person, y'all. I mean, they might as well be this. They probably actually are this exact same picture of her Maybe stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this that looks computer generated is yeah, the magical yeah. work of Ann Parker. Oh, this is one of my favorites. The that bunny's garland. Cute. Let's start with that, that one. Oh, these are so cute. Do you remember? Did she, didn't she not use Mary D? I remember she was telling a different. No, uh, this one she used Mary D, but then Mary the, the but Johnny. The, the, but the bias one she used. Um, Pitter patter. Pitter patter. Yeah. That's it. That's Emma. it. Emma's over there. Thank you, Pitter patter. Mary D. by Children's Corner has this fabulous crossover back. Um, I do. I just love this pattern. Oh, I love her colors and everything. Uh, in yes. This so, is called Bunny's Garland. They have a smocked insert place. And so Anne chose this pattern and she used her Bunny's Garland. And I just love everything about this. Well, what I love, Anne's, when she finishes it, she's got piping at the top and the bottom it holds it so pretty and uh i love that but her colors are gorgeous so in one of the other dresses she stitched in a size six. Oh, did she, she labeled the size of it i was like that's pretty cool yeah so um super cute perfect for this time of the year and uh this is one of her plates in her spring haul and mary d by children's corner comes in two size ranges Oh, that's good. Two people watching from the beach. They said it's gorgeous. And oh. then Jeanette George said she had light snow in or Oregon. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Look at it's those extremes. It's been hot here. It's been hot. So another Mary D. This one is using a striped seersucker. Um, what are these little oinkers called? called? 
Pretty piglets. Pretty piglets. Pretty piglets. And they have this cute little bow at their neck. I do think this is really sweet. Yeah, it is cute. So, um, again, using that smocked insert place for her pretty little piglets. Sweet, sweet. I feel like it's just such an honor for Ann for, and for you to send these to us. I just I can't get over it. How nice is that? Y'all, her stitching. What am I doing? How am I not showing y'all the up close of this stuff? Oh, okay, yeah. let's go back here. Y'all have got to see the perfection in all of her stitches. It is, it's wild. Yeah, that's beautiful. So here we go, Ann Parker of Crossside Cricket, and this is her bunny's garland. I love her color selections. She actually tells you the stitch count in her patterns. She tells you the colors that she used mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. in um, DMC floss and then also anchor floss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's given you everything you need um, to create this look. It's it's beautiful. And then here are the pretty piglets. So cute. <laughs> and I they mean, really, cute. that's that's perfect. Love it. Yeah. All right, and All right. since we're in the up close, let's show them this. Okay, this is Birds of a Feather. Cute, what cute. Is that? This looks like a Harper. Is this a Harper by Children's Corner? I feel like they have a Maybe. smocked. Um, so here it is um, with the, I feel like their collar is different. Anyways, um, very cute little bubble with the smocked insert. Yeah, it's cute. All right, what's up next? What do you have, Baby Chicks? Baby chicks. I think this, now, this is, is the pitter patter. This is the one by pitter patter. This is such a sweet little pattern too. It's a Betsy. This it's is a Betsy, Betsy by pitter patter. Yeah, oh, okay. So this, I think this this is a printed is printed on the bias. This is not this skirt and everything hasn't been cut on the bias. It's a printed. It's a bias print. Isn't it sweet that I, way? I think it is a print. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was... Yeah. Chris Bell says, I don't smock, but if I did, I would certainly make these adorable patterns. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. They <laughs> are so overload. sweet. Look at this yeah. up close, y'all. I love it. So, she has piping um, at the top and bottom mm -hmm. of her smocking plates. Mm -hmm. And I can see that she's done that on every single one. So um, we like that structuring aspect mm -hmm. too. A lot of times mm -hmm. whenever we're making kits for y'all, we include cording or we include some kind of coordinating piping. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I feel like it if Ann's it doing it, I want to do it yeah, that's for right. one thing. That's right. But also it does, it gives a structured little mm -hmm. stopping and starting point. It's very sweet. So this is Pitter Patter Betsy with Baby Chicks. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. All right. All right, how about a little boy? All right, what do we have? This is the rocking horses. Oh, I love this Rosa one. Crossside Cricket said um, it is printed on the bias. That's, oh, yeah. I, I was thinking Hey, that. Ann, how are you doing? <laughs> this, what? Well, every time I have a new favorite, don't I? Yes. This is my new favorite. I don't know, I think you've been sticking to that one. <laughs> I do love this. This is called Tiny Rocking Horses. If you could imagine this in any color, pink, blue, I mean, anything. I want to see a little boy running around in this. Oh, this is man. so cute. That's sweet. So, yeah. um, again, Anne has her piping mm -hmm. here, and um, that's just sweet. Super cute. So, sometimes it's a contrast piping, and other times it's the fabric cut on the bias. Even if everything was white and you piped it in white, you would still, you would still notice how beautiful that oh. piping is. You don't have to have a big contrast in order to for the the detail to show and look great. I mean, really, like I, I really think of it as a framing aspect. Mm -hmm. Like it, it just is that extra step that makes your work yeah. stand out so much more. It's beautiful. And then these are extremely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. All right. All right. Ian says it helps stabilize the insert, which uh -huh. is very All right. Fun. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's cute. All right, functionality is what Ann is saying. Mm -hmm. She likes it for the functionality. So this is called Golf Days, D-A-Z-E. And we're about to have Golf Days <laughs> here. In, here in the Augusta area. <clears throat> if you're a golfer, you know about the Masters. All right, I want to see like a little pink golf cart. Oh, yeah. Uh, on be, a girl's little yeah, outfit. Yeah. That would be super that'd cute. Be really cute. And Question thank for Ann. Do you interface the bodice to keep it smooth? Oh, that's for Anne. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if she answers that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Does she interface the bodice? Huh. You certainly can interface bodices. We do it a lot, and it's just a matter of what works for you. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. Isn't that I, pretty? I feel like I want to know all her tips and tricks to uh, pleading. Who I mean, even know? she does okay. not. And right. thank you so much for tuning in and, and answering these questions. That's so awesome. Now I think this one we don't have because I think she um, made it for a Oh, a niece or a, yeah. a granddaughter or somebody. So she's given this one away already. That's what I said. I said, yeah. we got to get these things back to you. I, I know, feel like I know. my child would be saying, where is my unicorn dress? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this is called Pretty Little Unicorns. Oh, man, this is pretty. All right. Um, this, okay, having a five-year-old, I know that this would be such a, a, a child pleaser. I mean, they would feel totally magical in their yeah. unicorn um, pleated insert. And she'd probably wear it every day. Yes. <laughs> she'd probably have, have to strip her down at night and wash it and put it back on before she woke up. Oh my goodness. And get ready to send them to school looking a little uh, rough That's because right. she's going to wear it every day. You know when they love something, they, they were really wearing Y'all, how this... stinking cute is the little rainbow tail that. and mane? That. Oh my goodness. Donna says, love them all. I'm making her bunny butts now and wish my stitches look like her. Oh, oh man. <laughs> no. Right? Yeah. Bunny butts. That's a cute plate. We um, created a kit with that last year. That was really yeah, sweet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, these are sweet. And thank you. Thank it you. is awesome to hold these and, and be able to show everybody. And we'll be sending these back your way. So we have our, our spring plates um, online now from Crossad Cricket. Um, Anne has a a fabulous collection of um, picture smocking plates to choose from. Again, she uh, provides the stitch count mm -hmm. for, for every mm -hmm. single row, um, and it is so, such a helpful guide for creating her plates. I don't know how she comes up with all these ideas. I know. <laughs> she, <laughs> She's pumping them she out. She is really creative. That's you right. are a creative lady. We have a new kit from her. Um, I, I don't know how to talk about it. Maybe her oh. fall haul. She says, unfortunately, my granddaughter has to wear a uniform. Oh, oh. no! What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, from the fall haul, I believe, um, she had a, a, a giraffe plate. And oh, yeah. we paired it with a turquoise window pane and linen. And um, it is super cute. So We've had to order and reorder and reorder that giraffe plate because of that, that cute. That thing is cute. Uh, yeah, that's cute. That's a cute, cute mm -hmm. plate. Okay, cute. so... Um, one, I want to show y'all a couple different deals here. Um, this, tell me about this bundle, Sally. Well, this is a bundle, a two yard bundle, 45 inch wide cotton lycra. It's a poplin weight and it's only $12 for, for two yards. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful white fabric. And so. What, what would you make with that? Um. Because it does it have spandex in it. It has a little, a little lycra. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. I mean, I can see absolutely women's pants or even little boys' um, shorts would be super cute. It would be a little lightweight for pants. Is it light? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's poplin weight, but I could see a summer blouse. Like oh, okay. a fitted blouse with darts and um, sleeveless and... Sleeveless collared button in the front? Yeah. Women's? That yeah, would be cute. Yeah. I think that'd be cute. So, um, $6 a yard is super cheap. So, um, another, another thing we have, we have this... Uh, KB colorful plaid. Um, <laughs> what? I can see Michelle oh, in the background flash. having a hot flash. Oh, she's she's good. We got her. <laughs> Emma's looking for some paper to give her a fan. <laughs> I was fine. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I saw her start doing a hand wave and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> so, this KB colorful plaid, this is using the Ashley pattern by Bonnie Bloom. Um, this was originally $42. We have it marked down to $25. There are four available um, or four remaining. Um, I'm not sure of the yardage. I mean, it feels like maybe a yard and a half to two yards. I think it's two yards. Two yards. This. This would be cute That's in any cute. style, and really, this is a deal. It's got thread in here, I can feel, and some ribbons that match. Um, what pattern? That's um, that's a Bonnie Blue pattern. It's the right? Ashley. Ashley. Yep, Bonnie Blue yeah. Ashley. Yep. I like that I, I do. You've made mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. I really like that one. Yeah. Um, another thing that we want to show y'all, um, we have the... Um, tell them how you found these, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually found them in a... <laughs> Not just a warehouse, but it was a big old barn in upstate New York. And I'm climbing around back there and I'm like, oh, look at these. This was how many years ago? At least 30 years ago. So this is just someone's 
stash well, they had and you were it was climbing an around old in it? company and I went up to their to their business and they said, Well you like old things? You ought to come come out here and take a look at this. I mean, I never knew what I was gonna get into. I mean, Joe was home taking care of the kids right now. I'm up there climbing around in some barn. <laughs> Coming home with these treasures, y'all. Yes, I mean, I loved them. And so, I mean, I came home with a lot of treasures. But they had um, woven, the jacquard ribbon woven with all kinds of cute little animals and ducks and things. And um, Scotty dogs. And and I'm like, yes, I'm going to have to take all of that. These are sweet. They're, they're really cute. So we had so... Um... And they're cotton, 100% cotton. So, 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 Sarah, she created this dress. It was a peony patterns. Um, I can't remember their round neck pattern. It's, it's such a cute dress. Um, and she used it right here in the hem, as you can see, it's above the acacia. ruffle. It is the acacia. I wrote uh -huh. it on the paper. Yep, yep. Um, so, <laughs> peony patterns acacia. So, so, Sarah was who, who styled this with one of these vintage trims. We have several other colors that we didn't bring down mm -hmm. here. But it's, it's just a fun way to add in, I mean, what a detailed so, touch. So, what? Is that what um, Lauren also <coughs> used? Mm -hmm. The stars? She did, yes. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. So, both of these came from upstate New York in a barn. Y'all are birds sewing flying around in there. In the barn. Oh, yeah. Didn't you see some of those... Some of those rolls, we had to kind of clean the we evidence threw off. threw away. Yeah, we yeah. did throw away. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so awesome. The stuff was so awesome. And at that time, too, we had a we had a huge market with people that were sewing for dolls. And so we found this tiniest, tiniest little whip stitch piping. Remember that red? Mm -hmm. Of course, did I need 10,000 rolls of those? I don't think so. But but when you've got all this I other. I know. It's like, <laughs> this stuff is amazing. Can I get a close-up of the picture? Oh, yeah. Sure. So cute. Um, so actually, this picture by So So Sarah was the inspiration for um, our recent photo shoot. We went to a local nursery mm -hmm. because look at the fabulous lighting that they got um, on her little girl. Isn't this green seersucker? It it's is. It's green striped yep. seersucker. And then I love, she actually used a little duck. I, don't, I really don't think you'll be able to see it, but I'm going to try. Um, a duck um, Swiss embroidered edging here on the hem. That's sweet. Yeah, that was that was cute. Very, very that cute. Was really cute. So, um, y'all, it's spring and it's so fun to share all these things. Did you see our newsletter? And I posted it today on social media. Um, it was the uh, Miss Mackey. I can't remember her. I think it was like D S Mackey or something. Um, she had like a the christening, the gown. christening mm -hmm. gown was so incredible. Mm -hmm. We also had a recent make from um, Kimberly Hudspeth. It's so great to know. Mm -hmm. She had this pencil skirt and this khaki and white and, and white blouse. It was just the softest colors. She's pretty. She is so beautiful. And her sewing is beautiful. I yeah. love, she, she really can pair things well and mm -hmm. she knows where to put stuff and she's just got an eye for sewing. Um, Y'all, it's so fun to share y'all's things. Thank you for sending them to us. Thank you for joining us here uh, for Gavin Gush. What's, who are we going to give our giveaway to? Well, let's see. I'm going to show this little thing. So we, well, goodness, it's probably been 15 or 20 years. Um, well, I've told you about the 3,000 pounds of Mother of Pearl buttons or 6,000 pounds or whatever I got. It was. It should tons. be like a fisherman. Yeah. Those are 40,000 anyway. pounds yeah. of Mother that's, of Pearl buttons. Right. They're getting, getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Anyway, um, this was a little flower. I had this idea and um, had a girl, Bobby Adgate, was working here. And she does really pretty embroidery. And I said, hey, Bobby, I have an idea. This, These little sequin flowers, these little sequins would make a pretty flower. And then the little football shape would make a cute cute leaves. And, and, um, and she said, well, who's going to do that? And I'm like, I want you to do that. I want you to do that because her work is so pretty. And so she she did that on blue linen, and um, I yesterday because Kristen's getting things organized, I found another stash of the sequin buttons, and so we're making this uh, flower kit again, and and uh, it was in the newsletter, and lots of people have been buying it, so that's that's fun. How I, I don't know how large this makes or what this was styled, but I mean I can see this like decorating like a collar mm -hmm. or something or even like on a pocket um i wonder what it would do at like the sash sash ends you know oh, like yeah. at the at the bottom of a sash and maybe i mean you might not want to see the back the back Depending side on of the this, fabric this stitching. Yeah. yeah but 
the um, we say it's seven sequin buttons and two uh, leaf shape but really I make them I, I put about 14 sequins in there because these are very very vintage and they're sometimes not perfectly colored you know sometimes they have a patina and so then I put maybe six leaves so you have enough to maybe you want to make a bud or something like that the the floss is not in there but it's a, just a yellow and a green and so they're, they're, or they're match it to your outfit French yeah that French knots cute. in the center and then just a stem stitch and really simple and cute and fun so now until I get through this stash of sequins. Until we find our next in the 40,000 pound haul. That's right. 60,000. 60,000. 60, <laughs> All right. So we are drawing three winners today. Um, we are excited to be um, carrying the free download PDF from Regina Karish. It's called Josie's Sunbonnet or Sun Hat and Bonnet. Mm -hmm. And um, we are giving away the instructions, printed instructions with these two kits. Um, it has this pretty little pleated bands and um like a it's, it's since it's pleated and gathered it makes this gorgeous little ruffle around the face um regina picked these colors and picked the styles for y'all so what are the, we going with we asked the question about um about installing zippers is that something you like to do and so you know a lot of times I always look to see what Fred Ferris has to say to us. Yo, we had a supplier <laughs> come in the other day, and he was like, y'all need a man in here. He was like, just to mix some things up. We got Fred. We got Fred. <laughs> so I've got to read this to you. So every you... single week, brought to you by Fred <laughs> Ferris and our, and our testosterone that's kicking around here at Farmhouse. I've had two memorable, memorable events with zippers, both terrible. <laughs> in elementary school, for some unknown reason, I zipped the chains of my swing inside my jacket. When I swung, the chains tightened and pulled the zipper so it wouldn't unzip. The bell rang and I was stuck. I tore my zipper apart just as my teacher was coming out to get me, and I never did that again. Also, some older cousins took me to a fair and had me ride the zipper as a kid. That was a near-death event, <laughs> being locked in a cage. I never did that again either. Thanks, Fred. We always look forward to hearing what you have to say. <laughs> That's funny. So, I think your comment made it in here in case you're needing to play up to a little sun it hat. Is in there, yeah. Hey, they're beach people. They yeah, might they need are their beach own people. Bad, bad yep. So we're going to draw for the sun hats first, and then the, the third prize is the zipper assortment. Awesome. But some people like that as the first. Go ahead. Okay, which, which, is, which bonnet's up? Let's go. We're going for the pink, the pink rosebud. All right, Keller, Carolyn Tester. Oh, Carolyn! Yeah, what I love is that I know that Carolyn is good friends with Regina. So oh, I think it's so cool that we'll be sending you this so uh, bonnet. It's that's so really neat. Up. Wow, Carolyn Tester. Carolyn's and hey, our friend Carolyn. in Florida. Yes. Yep. All right, now we're going to do the red, white, and blue bonnet. Go ahead. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So this is Mulberry Fiber Company. When um, her baby and June were babies, which is what's her granddaughter, they had some similar look. Y'all, she sews the cutest <laughs> stuff up. She recently sewed. I saw a skirt that Children's Corner has come out with, and she was oh, one of their she testers. Did that, one. that was so cute. Okay, Mulberry yeah. Fiber Company. Y'all go check out her page. It's yeah. really she can sew. Um, scared to death of zippers. I put one in a dress many years ago and it was an epic fail. I need those zippers to practice with. You guys are great. You missed the zippers. Oh, <laughs> but should, we'll send you a bonnet. Trade, trade yeah, out. right. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. Okay. The zippers. You want to read it? All right. Kathy Sorrell Sullivan. Many years ago, I always used zippers on all garments. Back then, the buttonhole scared me. But now I'd rather do a buttonhole than sew in a zipper. My machine just zips right through those buttonholes. Pun intended. <laughs> I love Gavin Gush and the giveaways. All right. Kathy Sorrell Sullivan. Thank you. I'm going to send Mulberry Fiber some zippers. Yeah, I love her page. That's what I think, too. That's cool. That's what I think. All right, y'all. See y'all back here Friday. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle never can push in.